Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course Git and GitHub by Arianix. My name is Ahmed and in this section we are discussing how we can work with remote repositories. Now in the previous lecture we have seen how we can create a free account on GitHub, how to create a new repository, how to instruct Git local repository to point to this remote repository automatically or track the remote repository automatically so that we can retrieve and upload our files and changes to that remote repository automatically. Now, suppose that you are another developer in the team and that you want to clone those changes or you want to retrieve the changes that have been done by your fellow developer to your local machine in order to review the changes that he or she has done and possibly to make your own changes or improvements in the project and commit those changes back to the remote repository so that the rest of the developers can review it and make changes to it and so on. This is, as we have mentioned before, this is the essence of version control systems. This is the essence of Git. So in order to make this work in Git, you will have to clone the repository to your local machine. Some other systems, some um, some other version control systems like Subversion, for example, they only let you download the changes or retrieve the files that have been changed. But Git is said to be a distributed version control system. This means that each and every machine or each and every client in the Git world will have its own local copy of the whole project, the own its own local copy of the whole repository. Any changes can be made to that repository and then those changes can be committed back or pushed back to the remote repository, but in all cases, each and every developer, each and every client will have his or her own copy of the whole project. So, for the purposes of this example, we are going to use another machine just to mimic the real world. In the real world, people use different clients, different machines to work with the repository. So, we are going to mimic that same situation. Here is another machine that is loading. Okay, let's log in. Now, let's navigate to or www.html okay as you can see here the directory is empty but the indexed html of the default apache installation so in order to make changes to the repository that we have okay let's connect to this from our client in order to enhance the vision okay so this is web2, cd var www.html, okay, and again we have indexed HTML only, this is the only file in the directory, so we want to clone the greeter application or the greeter website from the remote repository to our local machine, make some changes to this repository. So, to do so, we're going to issue the git command, git clone, followed by the URL of our repository. Again, the URL consists of https colon double slash github.com slash your username, whatever that may be, followed by the name of the repository that you have chosen. In our case, it is greater. So git clone this URL, press enter. As you can see here, the first thing that it has done is that it initialized an empty git repository in var www.html greeter. It has created, actually, it has created the new directory in this location, greeter, and also it has created .git file. It, is initial, it has initialized a local repository for you, and it has also pulled all the files. Actually, in our case, it's only one file. It has pulled index.html file that we have committed in a previous lecture from the remote repository from greeter at github to your local machine. Let's double check that. Yes, we have a directory called greeter. Let's go to this directory ls again and we have index.html and if you recall from the previous lecture these are the contents of index.html. Congratulations, we have a local copy of our repository on a second machine. Now, suppose that you, the other developer, has made some changes to the project and you want to push those changes back and by pushing I mean uploading the changes to the remote repository and then the other developer we are pretending here that we are two developers machine one is for developer one and machine two or web two is for developer two if you have a look here this is the second machine and this is the first machine this is web zero one and this is web zero two we're just pretending, pretending that we are two developers one of us is working on web zero one and the other one is working on Web02 on the very same project, which is Greeter. Okay, so to recap, 
the first developer has made the changes and he has pushed those changes to the master repository, to the master branch on origin repository, which means the remote repository. And the other developer has pulled those changes or cloned those changes to his or her own local machine. And now we are ready to make some changes to index.html and push those changes. Let's say, okay, please enter your name and a colon. Okay, let's add a, another paragraph that says, thank you. Okay, so this is a change. A thank you line has been added. So maybe maybe the developer has thought that the uh, user must be thanked after entering his or her username. So a line has been added to the index.html file that read, thank you. Just any change to be done to index.html file. Now we want to push those changes back to the remote repository. Before we do so, we must commit those changes. So git add index.html git commit minus m or minus minus message added or thanked the user. Just as we mentioned in the previous lecture, just a descriptive message that describes the change that has been made to the repository. Okay, so get commit minus m and the commit command has succeeded. Let's clear the screen. Now we're ready to push those changes to the remote repository so that other developers may be able to review it and possibly make further changes. So just like this without any arguments and it will ask for the credentials. After which it is going to push all the changes that you have made to the index.html page to the remote repository. Now, if you want to have a look here at the other tab, let's go to var.html greater again. Okay, and let's say that we want to have a look at the changes made by other developers to review them and to make further changes if we need to. Let's first have a look at index.html. As you can see here, it is the same as we have left it. We can just issue git pull without mentioning the repository name because as we have said before, since we have instructed git that it is going to use this remote repository as its tracking branch. So issuing git pull like this will open this page and this page is requesting to have a message added to this pull command. And we're going to explain this in a moment. Now, the pull command not only pulls the changes from the remote repository or from the remote branch, but it also merges those changes with our local branch. This means that we are going to commit as if we are going to commit those changes to our local branch. So for this reason, we'll have to add a message, a friendly message, to describe the merge or the commit that we are going to do to our local branch. So let's say, added a thank you. Okay, and let's quit. And now the merge operation is complete. If we have a look at index.html, you'll see that we are having here thank you, which is the line that has been added by our fellow developer from the machine number two. And in the next lecture, we're gonna see that we can actually pull the changes without committing them to our local branch. So see you next.